back to bridal sewing techniques and I've got my tea going here to get started. You can see I was trying to work on lunch there a few minutes ago, but that just did not happen. So welcome to fall rush, right? Um, as you know, I did take a vacation last week. That was much needed. So wonderful. Um, I'm so glad I was able to do that, but we still have like one more week left of intense intensity. <laughs> so I just figured today, instead of doing um, some specific, uh, you know, sewing project on a gown, I would actually go over some of the free motion applique stitching that we do with lace, like for hems and whatnot. So let's do that today. And what I want to do is um, go over a deep dive, as you can tell from the title, a deep dive of how to do the um, free motion applique stitches for sewing lace. I have a playlist on hems and I have a playlist specifically for sewing appliques, but it's still my number one question. Um, and it's more like a personal question for your machine. Like what exactly, like what exact setting do I have this and that on? And then I super common get asked about stitch length, which I think is kind of funny that I get um, asked that a lot. So we'll go into that. Lately, I have been recording with these extra lights here, and I hope you love them. I love them. What it does is it adds two different colors. So this side is cooler and this side is warmer. And then, of course, I have my normal light set up, and then I have my window there. Um, but it's giving me, like, see the blue on my thumb and then the warm on this side? it really adds to the dimension of things and see the shadowing. So I've been really happy with it and I hope you guys are happy with it too. Hello, hello everyone who is joining us. Maria from Florida, hello. And Nancy, um, a BST bestie, she's also sewing with a Juki. So that's great. Those of you who have a Juki, just follow along, obviously. If you don't have a Juki, though, I don't feel like it's going to be all that different. Um, if you are still using a home sewing machine, don't forget, I do have the video um, on um, how to do the lace applique stitching on four different machines and one of them is a home sewing machine and I talk about how to reach behind um, it's my Janome and just flip that switch and the feed dogs drop down and there you have it so that might be a little bit different um, I did have a uh, haul this past week and those of you who follow my stories on Instagram at bridal sewing I did a haul. Uh, we went to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Gatlinburg area, and I always hit up um, workshop tools in Pigeon Forge. Let me know if you've ever been there. I love that hardware store. They're so big that they have three locations very close together, um, and they're just so much fun. But anyways, um, I'm working right now on a video for that. That is kind of my haul video. And let me show you. I'll walk you guys through. I don't ever really just walk you through. Those of you who are going to be um, in on the virtual retreat um, in a couple of weeks, it's super, super close. But those of you who are going to be in on it are definitely going to be seeing all this. And it's going to be a little bit more tidy We've had the cleaning lady. Um, yeah, hi, Chris. Welcome back. I was sad you couldn't make it last week. Um, but yeah, so the cleaning lady has been cleaning all the cobwebs, but um, I it's up to me to tidy. <laughs> like, I don't think we need like a hair bow and <laughs> no trespassing sign. But there's the video that I'm working on now um, for the haul from Workshop Tools. So look forward to that. Here's also, um, there are some of my books, some of my workbooks that I have for giveaways. And here's just like this little plant area that I have. So anyways, let me bring you back over here. Yeah, so we're working on that video right now. 
Um, and this is what I wanted to show you. This fell over. This was the clunk you heard at the beginning. It's like, again, it appears in my video, but it's telescoping and it's like a strong magnet. So I can pick up like pins and stuff that I drop under here. So this is its new home. I'm just going to like attach it there and bring it over here. So if it falls again, we'll figure something else out. But I'm super excited about that new acquisition from the hardware store. So uh, as always, oh, thank you for the like, guys. That helps out so much because YouTube's like, oh, let me send this out to other BSD besties. You can do that little thumbs up. But um, yeah, so let me get this set up on a tripod and let's talk about the details of my machine. Some of this I'm going to be on tripod just so I can have both hands and then others I'm just going to be um, moving the um, phone around by hand so I can really show you what I'm doing. All right, so number one, I start with this Guterman Mara 100. All right. Definitely start with that. Thread matters. I have sewn, and you guys mentioned in the comments if you have two. Don't forget, I will go back through the comments and do Q&As too. We always do Q&As. But um, anyways, uh, I have sewn before. Let me know if you've done it too, where I was using a different brand of thread, and it literally just wouldn't even catch. It was so annoying. Um, but Guterman rarely does that. All right, so I'm looking for some fabric so that I can do a little applique thingy for you. Little thingy here. All right. Two. Oh, how bright I love me. So we've got that. We've got our machine set up with Guterman Mara 100. It is key. I'm trying to find some lace that is kind of normal, um, like kind of common, but that might would cause a little bit of trouble as far as it's a little extra thick or something. But I also don't want to waste a good piece of lace, you know? Lace is so important. All right, so I found, found this little piece of lace. And I'm going to be appliquing today on my machine with the Guterman, not with the Invisible. Although, let me say, Invisible is not that different. It's troublesome in terms of, you know how it like spirals and you're trying to get it through the needle and the eye of the needle. And oh my goodness, it's such a pain. It's a pain in that regard. Um, I don't care for swapping it out. Um, it's a pain for like winding the bobbin, the correct tension that super matters because invisible thread stretches. So if you stretch it while you wind the bobbin or the tension is just too tight, um, then when your machine sews it through and it gets a chance to relax, it's just going to draw everything up and it's going to be very tense. I'm sure none of you have ever seen that before. So that's kind of an issue um, with the invisible thread. But other than that, um, it's really not that much worse. Um, it is uh, visibility wise more difficult, of course. And so I like to not teach with it. Um, but let's just kind of go over the details of how I have my machine threaded, okay? And this, um, I don't delete my live streams. I mean, I'm sure something catastrophic could happen. <laughs> and it, I could do it someday, but I don't really need to delete them. So I'll add this into the um, playlist also for applique. So if ever you need to look back at it, you can. All right, so we've got this on a thread stand. And let me try to get up here using zoom. All right. I just go straight through the hole of the thread stand. Okay. Nothing fancy. I don't do a loop to loop. All right. And then, sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus on this. 
Let me show you in detail the way I come through this. Let's see. Oh, I can't get this. Okay, there we go. All these things, the notifications come up sometimes on here. Guys, I'm telling you, this new lighting setup, I love this. I'm I'm also using my Samsung, which I feel like is a little bit snappier um, for me to be able to figure out the focusing on it. But man, I love the two colors of lighting. I'm just shocked at the difference. But anyways, um, I come in through this bottom hole. And then I swing this. I'm, I'm not saying this is law and gospel. I might do it wrong, but I'm showing you how I do it and it works for me. So I just swing the thread through this way. One little swing. All right. Then I come down here. And this is the setup here. So we're coming in this way. Oh, here we go. Focusing. Focus. All right, go in this way. Come in here. And come out this way. All right. Then I just go straight down. Now, I know some people put a twist in here. If I was struggling with the tension on this, then I would add a twist to this. But the one twist increases your tension just a little bit. So... I prefer to adjust it here. And I know not everybody has a tensioner disc here. Some people have the two holes kind of like this. But I have a tensioner disc. And so I can use my screwdriver. It's a flathead screwdriver. And I can tighten or loosen these discs together to, to mess with the tension. So I really like that. If my applique stitch is not working right... This is usually the problem. It's usually jumped out of this um, because the way I stitch with this machine, which you'll see in a minute, I completely remove the, the work that's done typically by the tensioner knob down here. So that's why this one's important to me. So I just come like this. I come down straight. I don't like hook through anything. I come down this way. All right. And let's look and see how tight that is. It's not insanely tight. See, there's this little bit of a nub left here. And what I do sometimes is I mark this with where I want it to be because it comes with one mark. Sometimes I'll have two marks and I'm like, okay, I like this, this gold guy facing this way or, or whatever. But you can also just look at how much of your nub is left here. If you have it super tight, obviously more of this is going to be showing. See that? I don't really sew with it super tight, as you can tell. All right. So then I come out of here and I go across the check spring down under here through here. Just once through here, if that loops through here, the thread's just going to break all the time. All right, and then let's also look at this knob. This tells us how much uh, pressure we're having down here. So that's about how many threads I have showing on mine. I imagine, though, that this is adjustable. I'm not like... A professional sewing machine person but sometimes I have had it where a knob like say on like a serger and I have it turned all the way up to like four and I and I need it even more and there's no more to go if you take it to the service person they can actually adjust the machine where it needs to go and then put the knob back on where it's kind of at a middle setting where it gives you power to adjust again so let's see here and here and here and then 
this way. All right. Coming from left to right. All right. That's how I do my top. Now, everybody's a little bit different. And I actually, I have a threading diagram like down here in my drawer. Um, but this is what works for me for being able to switch from regular sewing and not having any trouble to being able to do applique stitch, okay? So if this doesn't work for you, you mess with yours and you get it to work for you. But this is just how it works for me. And keep in mind, like I was saying, each of these points has some effect on your tension, okay? So if you do one thing differently, it's going to, all your other things might be a little bit different. So you really just have to play with it. But if you've been having a problem with sewing, you know, straight and normal, switching to applique stitch, and then going sewing normal again, um, take a picture of how you have your machine if you love it, okay? If you love it, just sewing normal. Take a picture so you don't lose it, all right? So what you're going to do is you can try this and try it sewing both ways and see if you can go back and forth, okay? Um, and maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, all right? But everybody's different. All right, so let me get this bobbin out. I don't ever lift this piece. I rarely do anyways. I reach under. All right, so here's how I do my bobbin. I might have to put this on a tripod. Yeah, I'm going to have to put this up here. Let's see. All right. I'm trying to get that focused. All right. So the way I do this, I do mine like the number nine. Okay. Here. Here. There in here and you can tell I've got it a little bit looser than what's normally recommended. So typically they'll say you should be able to hold it by the thread and it should kind of hold its own, which mine is not. It should be that you kind of jump it like this and your then your bobbin casing will drop down. That's the norm, okay? So for mine, I have it a little bit looser than that. It's not so loose that it's like bird nesting when I'm sewing straight and normal, but it's loose enough that I don't have trouble when I'm doing the applique stitch, okay? So, and with this, it's the same thing. I don't really have like a technical thing where I can say, um, like I don't have this, marked or anything this screw where we adjust the tension I don't have anything like that I'll just like sew with it and then if I have trouble um I'll tighten it or loosen it but I think this is right at least it has been all week if not we'll readjust all right so let me bring this up like that all right so I'm first just gonna sew a straight stitch here Let me make sure you can see and then I'll get to the comments here in just a little bit we can do a QA. and a all right so I'm gonna start and back stitch and I'm just going to sew straight first so you can see the two stitches side by side. All right. So there's my straight. All right. And then 
This is the other thing. I always make sure I have an 18 on here. All right. Let me actually look at that. Make sure I have an 18 and it's super fresh. If it has a burr or anything on it. It's going to give you trouble. And I also know I'm going to be sewing horse hair here in a little bit. This is how I check for a burr. It does have a little bit of a grip to it. Kind of sad because this one isn't very old. But anyways, I'll take another 18 and make sure that the divot is facing this way. All right. Also, another thing that we talked about in um, stories like a month or so ago is your feed dogs do matter and you can order different feed dogs. So for people who have gotten like a used um, industrial, um, like a, an upholstery sewing machine, there's some things a lot of times they need to change out. Sometimes like your the motor isn't right. It's a little bit too gung-ho. Um, it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> Sometimes the pulley um, is the wrong size. And so it's like really going at it. I'm saying, I'm saying these things by experience, by the way. Um, and then um, sometimes they have grippier, heavy duty feed dogs, and that's going to cause problems with delicates. <clears throat> Basically, so the way that I sew with this is I do like a back stitch with my presser foot down. Okay. Every time you see my foot come up, then you know that I'm engaging the lift. This is coming up and this kind of relaxes a little bit. Okay. This being relaxed is so important for being able to switch back and forth. All right. So I locked it. Now I'm just going to kind of like halfway raise it. And then I'm going to sew my applique stitch. Now people ask about stitch length. You'll notice I did not change my stitch length at all because my hands are what gives us our stitch length. All right, so I'm gonna do that. I usually only go like, I don't know, maybe like six inches or so. And then I do like a back stitch and that kind of locks it in. So I've heard some people say online like, you can't just sew without tension because then your lace will be shifty. Um, I mean, if you had zero tension, that's probably true. But I have the tension that's built into the bobbin. And I have the tension that's built in up here on top of the machine. So it's not like I have no tension, right? And I go ahead and lock it every now and then. So let me show you the stitches um, both top and bottom. So you can see, oh, let me get back to my thought about stitch length. So stitch length doesn't matter because my hands make the stitch length. And I'll show you that in a second too. But let's look at this. This is the top side. I love the contrast in this lighting. So there's my straight stitch, just chugging along just fine. And basically when we do this applique stitch, it's almost like a coloring book. Just kind of go around, right, the edges. So that's the top side. And then here's the bottom side. It's moving and grooving just fine. No bird nesting or anything. And then let's see if I can get it. Yeah, you guys can see that good. All right. Then you can see kind of my outline here where I've stitched. The stitch, the stitch lengths are relatively equal. They're not equal as if you were just chugging along, letting the, the, um, feed dogs pace you, but they're relatively equal and there's no bird nesting going on, no loops or anything. So this right here is goals. This is goals for me. All right. So if I had problems with any of this, I would just adjust my tension, but this is the threading um, I don't know how to say it, threading diagram, I guess I should say, for what works for me to be able to switch back and forth um, most of the time. 
let's see, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh, I wanna show you the stitch length thing. Okay, so let me do an applique stitch here again, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm making like an embroidery hoop with my hands. You see that? I'm kind of stretching the fabric a little bit, and I'm gonna make very little movement compared to the stitches, okay? Now I'm gonna do big movement compared to the stitches. And here you can tell the bobbin is way too loose for how big of a stitch I'm making. But obviously this is a demo for stitch length. This is not a demo for how do you sew a thousand stitches per minute or per second applique stitch while you're looping. <laughs> All right, so this is what I mean by stitch length setting doesn't matter for me. All right. This is when I was barely moving it. Look at how like tight and perfect it is. This is when I started getting crazy with it. Okay. Very long stitch length. And I would say I'd probably let these define the stitch length for me. Okay. Like that. Again, I wouldn't recommend sewing it like that haphazardly. You can see the tensions are all off and everything when you do that. That's a big mess. Um, it's actually kind of pretty. <laughs> if you were like making a lace or something. But yeah, so that's my demo for stitch length. This is why I say um, stitch length knob doesn't matter. Let me try to do it straight so you can see that again. All right, I'm going to lock it. I'm going to go straight. All right, kind of normal-ish. Move it kind of slow. Now I'm gonna move it kind of fast. And without me doing the loops, we're not gonna get that pulling from the tension issues like we just did before. All right. So here we go. Kind of normal. Super small stitch length, super tight. Longer stitch length. All right. So as you guys saw, I didn't mess with the knobs at all for that. That was completely my hand because your hands, when you're doing the applique stitch, they're replacing the work of the feed dogs because all I'm doing is by lifting this, I'm not letting the feed dogs make enough contact to get traction to control the fabric. That's how that part is working. So obviously, like I was saying in my other video on a home machine where you can drop the feed dogs, they just drop down. Um, then, I mean, it's perfect. You can put like a stippling foot on there or no foot at all. I could be doing this with no foot at all too. Um, and it's going to work fine because there's nothing to grab. So you don't have to mess with your tensions. So in that case, you you would want this, um, all of your tensions pretty much to stay the same. You wouldn't have to do anything, any um, modified tension diagram or anything like that if you were going to be operating a machine that way. So um, let's talk about feet real quick. And I know, let's see. We're 28 minutes in. I'm going to try to talk about feet for just a few minutes, and then I'll get to the comments and the Q&As. Um, so for feet, when I'm sewing, I um, pretty much, oh, sewing applique, I pretty much keep like whatever foot I'm already using. I don't take the time to switch out my foot. Um, and you guys know these are my big three favorites. I use the left, right narrow zipper and then I use them separately the left or right narrow zipper foot um, and the reason why I like to leave feet on of course it saves time rather than taking it off but for me it's a safety issue I just feel like really nervous when I take the foot off and sew without a foot and I know a lot of people do it but I just feel nervous about it I also feel like when I have the foot raised a little bit Particularly like if I'm sewing like a corded lace that kind of gets caught sometimes on the needle. I like having a little bit of a foot there to kind of knock the fabric de back down to keep the fabric from bouncing. Um, and again, that's not a problem with all fabrics, but some fabrics are bouncier than others. 
You can also do um, the stippling foot slash darning foot, which I have on this singer. Sorry, I've got a bunch of sewing supplies piled up right here. But um, this one here, I have, let's see. Let's see. Oh, goodness, there's stuff popped up again. All right, where do I do this? Okay, I hope you guys can see it. But anyways, this is the stippling foot, and it's got this arm that comes up behind here, so every time your needle goes up and down, this is jumping. So you're removing the top pressure from your stitch with every stitch. Now on this machine, um, for those of you who have followed me with the conversion of this one, I simply, I mean, it's literally a set screw. It's so easy. And I have a video on how to do it, but I just took the feed dogs out of here. And I don't throw them away. I'm not doing violence against a, a vintage machine or anything like that. But I keep them in here if I need to convert it back later. But this one basically, um, I have this set up permanently for now as an applique stitch and um, I just this is for the Guterman this is not the invisible thread okay so I did change this out to a LED lamp that was fun the other one was stuck in there but um, I have a new lamp on there so that's cool and then this other one sorry the girls have been painting um bustle hooks and set them over here to dry I was like don't paint them on pink because the back of the bustle hook gets pink and it could bleed so what a waste anyways uh this one is the one that I have the video about the restoration and refurb right and, and this is the one that is um always threaded with invisible same thing I removed the feed dogs so there's no feed dogs. It has a stippling slash darning foot. And it also has this slick mat. I love these. You can get them at Amazon. But it allows you to, the fabric just slides over it um, much better than it does like wood. And this is waxed wood, but it's just, this is amazing, the silicone mat. So I think that was everything. If you guys have questions about the applique stitches at all, please put them in the comments because I'm getting ready to read them right now. I'm going to sit down with my tea and let's, let's chat, shall we? Let's see here. So any other questions about the applique stitch, fire away. Meanwhile, I'm going to read through the comments here. There we go. You're nice and settled. Okay, here we go. I'm going all the way back up to the top. Schwartz Adventure 5. Hello from Joni in Minnesota. Hello. How many of you guys are sewing with me today, by the way? I love it when you do sew with me. That's like my favorite. Tammy Murray. Hello from Arkansas. Hello. And Chris, I did see you come in. Hello from Lancaster. Just tuning in. And Angie Gregory, I have a Juki 8700. Love it. 87 is, um, this is a 5550 in, but if I were getting a new machine right now, I would get the 87. It's like super similar. I forget what the difference is. You guys might can remind me. I don't remember. Um, there's some difference, I'm sure, but it, it's kind of the newer model or whatever. Mine also needs, um, mine needs a new belt. My belt is stretched out. All right, Tammy, we had our house re-roofed last year. The roofers left one of their magnetic nail sweepers after multiple unreturned messages. I've used it in my sewing room since then. I love it. Yes, it's amazing. Um, I do highly recommend the nail sweepers and you can get them commercial, like super strong on wheels. I highly recommend that if you have carpet, um, because needles and carpet, it can be very dangerous for customers and you. I actually have a seamstress friend of mine. She might be listening in. Um, I have a seamstress friend of mine who, um, 
had to have surgery that she had a needle embedded so badly in her foot. All right, let's see here. Where'd my chats go? Where's my chats? Okay, here we go. All right. Let's see, Teresa. Let's see. I'm sorry, but you don't have the machine threaded right. It should be threaded the same as a long arm. It is basically the same machine. I will send you a picture of the proper threading. Especially important, the area involving the tension disc is threaded wrong, which can create tension issues. I don't doubt that, Teresa. <laughs> I do not doubt that because I have people message me all the time. They're like, I did your the thing that you're doing with your machine and it won't work. And so, you know, I feel like there's probably some you know, quote unquote, proper threading ways out there that may not work for everybody. So I'm just showing the way that works most flexibly for me. Is that even a word? <laughs> flexibly. <laughs> but yeah, I have, I actually have the book on this machine. I did buy it new. We have the manual and everything. So I have access to like the manufacturer's recommended, um, threading. And again, everyone, you know, rock on. If that's how you want to do it, do it the way they say. And um, especially like if you're just going to be sewing straight stitches all day, I would probably just go with the manufacturer's way. But this is the way that has worked for me um, to be able to switch back and forth very easily. All right, let's see. Do, do, do. Going back through Jacqueline Zone. Hello, everyone. Hello. Terry is ripping out a bagged hem with horse hair. Ugh. Ugh is right. Part of the job, huh? We got to rip out. I always say that if you hate ripping out, <laughs> you probably won't like being a sewist because we do that more than just about anything. All right, let's see. Maria, when you sew applique, you would follow the pattern of the lace, correct? So if it's a flower, you would follow the petals, etc. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I mean by like a coloring book. So I'm going to come along these edges just like I'm tracing is kind of what it is. But I'm, I'm bumped in a little bit from the edge. You can see that. Because I don't want to run off too much. And then if you jump from motif to motif, I would just lock stitch, raise my presser foot, slide over to the next applique, put it down, lock stitch again, do it again. And then I would go back through and trim all my threads in the end. That's usually what they do like in the lace making industry. All right, let's see. Chris, I don't have a Juki, but I do have a separate machine dedicated for applique. I highly recommend that. I highly recommend. Um, if you don't have one that flips back and forth, that is absolutely what I would do. Let's see. Well, obviously, I have one that flips back and forth, and I have the dedicated. And some people have asked me that. They're like, why do you have why do you have this where you can do it? And then you also have a dedicated machine because if it's just like a little bit of sewing, it's not going to be long. I'll go ahead and use this machine, but the knee lift can give you repetitive stress injuries over time. I do have hip trouble sometimes. So, um, if I'm going to be sewing a hem like a long time or, you know, completely applicating a jacket or something like that, I'm going to slide over to a dedicated machine. All right, and you had more in your comment. Let me see what you were saying. I have feed dogs down and set up with transparent thread. Would you recommend Guterman instead for a consistent tension? Oh, that is an awesome question. Thank you, Chris, for asking that. I do not like Guterman clear thread in my machines, okay? It's, I don't know, it's got like a... the stiffness to it or something is not right. Um, and for those of you who are part of my membership, we talked about this like a week or two ago. I was, I was replacing my thread and I was saying what source I ended up finding. 
Let's see if I can get it. Yes, I'm shooting through a plant right now. Let's see. Ah, okay. Let's see if I can get it like this. This is my favorite. Come on. Clear Lawn. It's made by American and Efrid. And it's a Tex 8, I think. Yes. That is my absolute favorite machine clear. And what happened was I ran out of um, the clear that I was using on my vintage one that I had changed over just for applique. And I, I used a different um, brand in there. And it was horrible. It just, it absolutely flat out would not work. So I got on the prowl because this, this um, spool is really old. I've had it for a long time. It's huge, right? Um, so I got on the prowl and had to find a new source for it. So that whole saga was actually buried in the membership information. Um, by the way, if you guys, uh, if you ever join a membership, and some of the membership levels are super cheap. They start at $1.99. But if you join the membership, you get to see all the old stuff in there too. So none of that's lost. Um, but I don't remember off the top of my head or I would tell you, but I did end up finding a source online to get that clear lawn and the amount I wanted and the text I wanted. It was kind of hard to find. So, all right. Irene, BST Bestie, sewing and listening. Nice. Brazil, Patricia from Brazil. Welcome. I love my internationals. All right. Let's see. Uh, Maria, I'm sewing along with you. Awesome. And then, uh, Patricia, I think that's how you say your name. What time is it there? What time is it? It's like 2.45 in the afternoon here. All right, Jeanneth. Hi, this is Jeanette from West Duluth. Sewing and design. I love your voice and I love the way you teach everybody to sew and sewing bridal. And I'm always learning from you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you. How sweet. Have you heard my story that my voice was actually my last thing that I had to get over before I started doing YouTube? I was so worried about my voice because I do have some vocal damage that results in, okay, I'll make it on purpose, sounds like a vocal fry, <laughs> but I get a little bit of a vocal fry. There you go, fry. <laughs> I am not doing that on purpose. It's in there. And I was so afraid that people would think my voice was annoying or that I was trying to be like a Kardashian or something like that. But it's like legit. It's like baked in. <laughs> I should probably see a specialist. But I was so worried about it. And um, everybody in the community has been so welcoming and encouraging to me. So I really appreciate it because... I mean, it was a major hang up. Oh, I just saw something. Now, this is a change of subject. But thank you, Jeanette. That's so sweet. Look what happened. I put this in a video the other day. The sleeves video. But when I was recording, I knocked the phone off the tripod. And I lost the leaf of one of my favorite plants. Isn't that sad? It's, th this plant has real polka dots. Like they grow out of it. So I kept it. <laughs> Whenever that plant loses leaves, I keep the leaves and I dry them. These are my favorite. This is my favorite leaf I ever lost from that plant. Is it something like maculata or something? I forget the name of it. Begonia maculata or something. Um... But luckily, this is this plant made it into some of my pictures with that leaf. And so I always have pictures of it. My plant babies. All right, let's see. Belinda, join late. Can you show the threading once again? Belinda, yes. Okay, so what's going to happen is when I end the live stream around 3, um, YouTube is then going to process this video and turn it into like a regular video in my catalogs of videos. And so what I'll do is I'll have this video in my um, lives tab of my, um, of my YouTube channel. 
homepage. I'll have it on the live, the lives tab. And then I'm also going to have it in my uh, playlist for applique stitching. So yes, you can absolutely go back and you guys can watch it and rewind and screenshot and all that that you need to. Um, let's see, I have an 8700 and I have it working well, but need to see if there's a better way. Yes. So guys, remember what I said, please keep that in mind. I want you to take a detailed picture first of your threading. Okay. Take pictures of how you have it. Um, and then, of course, like Teresa was saying, the manufacturer publishes the, the best practices for how you should thread your machine. Take that into account. Remember how you have it threaded. Try it this way and see what you like. Okay? So try several different ways. This way may not work for you. Um, this machine is like over 10 years old, and this is just the threading that works for me. So, yeah, don't please do not like undo your threading without taking record of it and then try mine and then be like, oh, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that, but I don't remember how it was before. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, I, I feel like the it's one of those things like don't touch it. Like once you get it just right, don't touch it. <laughs> So, okay, uh, let's see. Varmel, I'm here. I'm a little late, but hand sewing and listening. I'll go back and watch the demo. Welcome, Varmel. All right, let's see. Maria, thank you. The backstitch is something I need to remember in between. Yes, it is. Because the backstitching also kind of checks your tension a little bit. If, you, if your top or bottom thread have, you know, been running a little bit looser than they should, once you do that back stitch, it's pretty tight. It'll kind of bring it to rights a little bit, I have found. So try that out. What I've found a lot of times is people try to do like 80% of what I'm doing and then it doesn't work. Like I feel like just about everything I'm doing is super important. Like if I sew with a needle smaller than an 18, it does not work. Does not. Like zero. The thread will not catch. If you go in here with a nine or a 14, it will not catch. It will not work. So that is super important to me. And I just use the organ brand and I just buy them by the case. All right, let's see. One of these days, guys, I might quit being cheap and I might uh, sign up for StreamYard where I can like put the comments up at the bottom of the screen so they're there forever. But in the meantime, I just read them out loud. <laughs> All right, let's see. Naomi, I am sewing, but a very non bridal bingo dauber bag. All right, I had never heard of these until a friend requested it. Isn't it funny the um the things that we do with sewing? <laughs> My, the places we will go. And that's a BST bestie. Oh, okay. Patricia, I'm near Rio de Janeiro City. The time is 1645. So it's like um, 4 p.m. So I guess with you being Southern Hemisphere, you're just like an hour, you're an hour later than me. Um but you are um, Southern Hemisphere. So we're going into fall. So I guess you're going into spring, huh? It's so interesting um, talking with people worldwide, what their time and season is like. Um, also, guys, don't forget um, the, the virtual retreat is coming up. It is two weeks from now. It's the week after Thanksgiving, USA. So it starts on Monday. Um, the last Monday in November, and it will be for the five-day work week, and we'll run it day and night, and I'll do different sessions, even around the clock, trying to comfortably accommodate um, those of you who live in different places around the world. So don't forget about that. If you still want to sign up, it's a capped group, so it's a small group, and I still have not advertised it. I've only just been mentioning it in my content. So um, I have an admin person coming. This is why I'm mentioning it. It's super important. I have an admin person coming tonight who is going to um, work on getting my email list together, 
of everyone who in the past has requested information about retreats. So, so far, the only emails I've sent out are the ones that requested um, specifically the virtual retreat since my soft launch like a month or two ago. Um, I have not reached out to anybody else on the email list. I have not um, advertised it at all publicly. So I was saying the other day in our Discord group, I would love to just have um, just my regular BST content consumers in that group. That would be so awesome if we could fill it with you guys. Um, but yeah, so we're going to reach back and, and reach out to everyone else who has requested in the past um, and then uh, and then possibly run some ads. But I really don't I don't really want to do that because they're not going to understand our philosophy here. You know what I mean? Like this channel is so different from um, most sewing communities. And I've done that on purpose. You guys know that if somebody is rude and ugly, I just chase them right out of the comments. <laughs> we are not going to have a catty, catty, catty community here. It's all positive and everybody can sew the way that works for them. So, um, that's my goal. So as gatekeeper, I'm going to, I would try to avoid the advertising. All right. So let me see these other comments. Does anybody else have any questions? It's almost three. Hit me up with any questions that you may have. Um, if you want to sign up for the virtual retreat, it is um, on my website. Go to bridalsewing.com and it's right there. You slide right down and you'll see it. You can sign up and it gives you more information too before you sign up on it. Um, it is single-handedly one of the best investments you can do in your sewing business. And most people who attend a retreat with me go on um, their first week of business. They easily earn back the money. Easily, easily, easily an extra money the first week back that they work. So um, it's very low risk with that and highly recommended with us going into a recession because as you guys know, sewing business is almost recession proof. Um, it I have found recessions are great uh, for the sewing business. So right now is a great time to start your sewing business. All right. So, uh, D Marie fashions. Hello everyone. My name is Marie from Nigeria. Welcome Marie. And Varmel is asking, do you do a lot of revamps? I'm working a gown that was originally worn by the grandmother. Okay. So I call them redesigns. Go ahead and call them revamps. I'm not saying that's wrong, but if I slip up and call it a redesign, that's what I call it. Um, I call them vintage redesigns. I do. I do a lot of those. Um, and I love them. They're easily my favorite way of, um, of sewing bridal is doing the vintage redesigns. I just, just love them. So have fun with that. Um, and then Irene, uh, please remind me the ST bestie, why an 18 needle? Um, it's because the hole is bigger and the scoop that's there beside the hole is bigger. And, um, I just find it gives more space for the, for the bobbin to catch, um, for the, for the threads to lock. So what I find is if I use like a, you know, 14 or nine or 10 or 11 or whatever. If I use something smaller, um, the, the threads don't lock with one another. It just skips. So, um, yeah, so that's why I use an 18 and then I just make sure it's sharp. And then any needle hole that's made is hopefully not like a puncture or a tear in the fabric. Hopefully you can just kind of schmooze it out with, um, steam and scratch it with a bone, right? And people sometimes ask me about that. Are you joking? Like what a bone? What are you talking about? It's literally a bone. You buy a bone. <laughs> it's made for this. It's made for like scrubbing, spot cleaning. Um, and we use it to rub out um, like needle marks and stuff in fabric. So I can show you that as well. Let's see. Varmel says, oh, 
Patricia says, Varmel, my mom revamped my great grandmother wedding dress for my 15th year birthday almost years ago. That's so sweet. It's so precious to have a dress continue in the family like that, you know? Varmel, the lace is so delicate. I'm afraid to use a sewing machine, so hand sewing it is. Varmel, that's a good call. That is a very good call. If it feels delicate, hand sewing is probably best. Um, Irene BST Bestie, she is a channel member. Thank you. Would you go a session on redesigns? Would I do a session on redesigns? Yes. I would. I feel like that needs to be um, a small um, e-course. So as you guys know, um, it's it's kind of like I'm finishing up. I'm, of course, sprinkling in other content along the way. But I'm finishing up how to design your own bridal line this year. Um, the next thing is the virtual retreat in two weeks which I don't think I'll finish my series before then. I was hoping to finish my series by the end of summer, but I'm going to finish the How to Create Your Own Bridal Line by the end of the year. So virtual retreat, and which does have replays, by the way. I know a lot of you have to work and you're afraid of missing sessions. I'm going to schedule it kind of all over the place where you can definitely catch some things live, but it also has replays. So you don't have to worry about that. And then after that, after the first of the year, I am going to lighten up just a little bit, not much, but I'm going to lighten up my publishing of content online just a smidge so that I can pound out those e-courses. I've said that for several years and I just haven't gotten around to it. So um, Irene, I do feel like that would be a separate small e-course. What the idea is, the retreats are a little bit higher ticket, right? That's a, like a it's a, it's an investment in your business, a startup investment, and it's a solid amount of time you spend, right? The week. Plus it does have follow-up support, by the way, one-on-one and email and whatever. Um, but the e-courses, they're going to be smaller bites and they're going to be more focused on a certain topic. So, um, I would like the price point to be a lot smaller. Like for instance, I would say, vintage redesigns and have maybe, I don't know, three or four hours of content wrapped into the course and sell the course for like $49. That's the idea I have is for the courses to be cheaper and a la carte where you can kind of pick like, hey, I need this. I don't need that, you know, and that they'll be up forever kind of thing. Um, the retreat, I'm never I don't have plans anyways, I should say. I do not have plans on ever publishing the full retreat to the public after the fact. Um, because we are signing NDAs within the group so that we can all talk about money and our own personal situations and business situations. Um, so we will be signing NDAs. So I can't publish all of that, one. Um, and then two, it's just so personally tailored to the attendees. Um, that it's not going to be quite as helpful as actually attending it. Um, so that's why even if you have to do some of the replays as an attendee, um, you're still going to be kind of on the same page with us as we progress through the week. You know what I mean? And it includes that one-on-one -on -one follow-up time. My courses are not going to include the one-on-one -on -one consulting after the fact. So I hope that differentiates things for you guys. Um, all right. Lace with culture. All oh, this came right on time. I wasn't able to send you my video with the issue I was having frowny face. I've had my bridal. Oh, this is my different. Okay. Let's see. Came right on time. I wasn't able to send you my video with these. Oh, 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 okay. Lace with culture. So you're saying, I guess you reached out to me with attention question with applique stitch, I think is what you're saying. So awesome. I, I actually have it. Like I said, a lot of people reach out very often about it. I'm just going to take a sip just like one second here. Okay. Belinda Broussard. I've had my bridal alteration business for over 15 years. Will the retreat be helpful for inexperienced business? Humbly asking. Yes, Belinda, it is. And um, I appreciate you humbly asking and I will humbly answer. Yes. <laughs> um, I do. I'm super honest when people ask this question. I have turned away 
quite a few people um, just in this soft launch who have said, like, is this right for me? And I've been like, um, no, actually, like when they describe where they're at, you know, so if I felt like you were in the wrong place, um, business wise for this to be profitable for you, I would let you know. So some people I say no. And I say, um, I think you'd be better off with a few consultations one-on-one, -on -one, um, or you'd be better off with this and that, or you need to go do this first or whatever, or wait, whatever. But if you have had a business for 15 years, but you're wanting to really up your game, okay, you're wanting to make a better experience for your brides, better branding, better relationships within the industry, um, better workflow for both your, you know, physical body not to be so strained, but also your timing, you know, the health of your eyes, things like that. And then also a better bottom line. Um, I do go over pricing coaching and scheduling coaching. All that's going to be covered in the retreat. Um, and most people go on to just about or more double their money that they're making after they have a retreat with me. So that's what I'm saying by it's not wasted money. So we can really go through and troubleshoot. And you'd be surprised like when someone else looks at your business with a fresh set of eyes, they just bring a different perspective and sometimes they can find workflow issues. So I even do that. I even deal with you know, consultants. A few weeks ago, I had a consultancy appointment with someone and was like, okay, what do I need to do better? What do I need to do better? And oh man, so helpful. Just stuff I could not see. So, you know, it's just like trying to fix your own hair <laughs> without a mirror or something. Sometimes you need other perspectives. So we bring that in. And then also, um, what a treasure it is to have a group of other sewists that will talk um, the backroom chat with you about stuff. Um, and then also, speaking of that, don't forget, I do have a Discord group. Discord is a group chat app. So um, it's kind of like Facebook groups without the Facebook is what I say and without the drama. And I say we're chatty, not catty. <laughs> <laughs> on there. So I do have a Discord group and I will link to that in the description um, after we finish this. And then I do often mention it because it is invite only. I do often mention it in my stories on Instagram. So on Instagram, I'm at bridal sewing and um, I'll go back and put my Discord invite link into that as well. And then let's see, Varmel, Patricia, Bian. That's awesome. Irene Hahn, you, of course, sounds great. I think so, too. I can't wait. Um, Varmel, I'm signing up for sure. Awesome. Are you saying you're signing up for the um, retreat? I'd love to have you. All right, Patricia, I use domestic sewing machines. I embroider with the Singer Embroidery Sewing Machine needles. They are thicker and have a groove for the threads. Okay, so I guess that's working kind of the way I use my 18s is what I'm reading into that. So I can use several sizes depending on the fabric. Nice, nice. So that's a great hint there, guys. The If you're using embroidery sewing machine needles. Let's see. Irene Hall, next year, would you please give us six months heads up on the retreat? This year, I'd already planned for the week of this year's retreat. Irene, that is a great idea. Okay, so... Full disclaimer, I have not said I will do it every year. Um, part of me would love to say that, um, but I have to go through this first. <laughs> and I'm going to need to tweak it. So I can't guarantee it'll be exactly a year um, when I do this, you know. Um, but if or when I do this in the future, I'll do it in what's typically our off season, usually probably like the winter or something. Um, so it may be, um, that I do it, um, again in less than a year. I might be like, wow, that came together so good. And I've got like 15 more people that couldn't attend and they want to do it. Let's do it again before bridal season hits. I might do that. Or I might be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that was so hard. 
So I might would want to get almost like some e-course content built up first that I can like roll into it so that I don't have to be pretty much like in my shop 24 five, you know, uh, 24 hours a day, five days straight. So it's going to be pretty intense. Um, and there's a, there's a going to be a big learning curve for me for the tech because we're going to be doing zoom formats and then also kind of just like uh, video on demand formats as well. And then we have private channels on discord that we'll be having. And then I'll also have, um, password protected, course pages, um, on my website. So I, I will though, Irene, I get what you're saying. Um, I will definitely try to give you guys more of a heads up I'm trying to think, what did I do this year? I soft launched it in August. Yeah. So it was like probably a little less than three months this time. Um, which I agree. That's not very far out notice. Um, so yeah, if I do this again, I will definitely give more notice. Shalom. Hi, sorry I'm late. Oh, that is all right. Um, we're wrapping it up here. We're almost done. But like I was telling the other people, um, I will keep this up. So if you go to my channel homepage on YouTube and click on lives, you will see my catalog of all my live streams. And this one, because I was working on the applique stitch, it's going to be in its own playlist with the applique stitch. So Let's see. Uh, Irene, okay, I will budget for your continued learning content, e-course retreat, etc. Um, also, Irene, and, and to everybody else, okay, um, I felt like I it was just so much to learn this time that I didn't want to get into it. But in the future, if I do a larger, larger package, I'm probably going to include um, financing, um, it's just going to be kind of tricky, of course, like to do that overnight where I'm like, oh, I offer financing. Like I need to really shop around and do due diligence with that. But I know a lot of people do that, that there's a way to set up financing and that'll make it a lot easier too. So Triple A says, I redesigned the mother's gown for her daughter and to strengthen the lace on top, I sewed 12,000 Swarovski crystals and pearls on it. Oh my goodness. That's a lot. Shalom saying, yikes, brave. Yes, actually, I think, I think that tops my record. Um, I did a dress one time, 11,000 is what we counted. It was 11,000 Swarovski bicones that we hand sewed on that dress. And I hope you are charging well, my dear, because that's a lot of work. And I did it with a team. It was um, three of us sewing. Why are my chats not coming up? Oh, goodness. I don't understand. Okay, here we go. All right, guys. Well, that is it. We're a little bit over the hour. We made it an hour and eight minutes. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, as always, you can leave them in the comment section down below after YouTube processes this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button before you jump off because it really, really helps costs you nothing and it really helps me. I appreciate you guys so much. Take care. Bye.